Hey there guys, it's your good pal Wiggly, and welcome back to more Let's Play Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney Blind. In the last episode, we cleared Edgeworth's name twice solving the DL6 incident, and had a very heartfelt goodbye, or more accurately, a see you later from our good friend Maya Fey, as she went on to complete her spirit medium training. And in this episode, we're continuing onward to Case 5, Rise from the Ashes. No turnabout in this case's name, interestingly. So in between episodes, I asked a couple of friends about this case specifically, who are really into the Ace Attorney series, because I knew that this case was not present in the original GBA release of Ace Attorney 1, and it was added to the DS port, which came out after the original trilogy release on the GBA in Japan. So I wondered if this case was canon and important to experience, and yes, it apparently is canon, and it's important to experience if you want to experience the whole series, because it does have some setup for things way later, but I was told not to worry about that and just take it as it comes, and it'll all make sense in the future, so that's what we're going to do. I was also curious if it would be better to experience this after the original trilogy, and I was told, no, just experience it now, you'll be fine. I was also told to keep in mind that this case was developed for the DS, obviously, and not the GBA, so things might look a little bit different, there might be some new music, and also it might utilize some things that only the DS could do, like the touchscreen, and if that's the case, I'm curious to see how they adapted that forward to the ports on like the Switch and PC and the, uh, the PlayStation. So without any further ado, let's go ahead and get into it. Case 5, Rise from the Ashes. The animation is already much more vivid. I, I'm noticing an immediate difference. Whoa, that looks... <laughs> that looks really fluid. It's been two months since Maya left the office. Two months without a single trial. I've had offers, but none I took. That is, until the day that girl showed up. Wow, so we're picking up pretty much right where we left off, okay. Why do I come here to the office every day? It's not like I want to work. There you are, finally! Where have you been? Oh my god. You look very similar in, like, your portrait looks really similar to Maya's, and it kind of threw me off. Uh, you have a lab coat on, you have vials of something. Are you a scientist, or are you, like, a nurse? My sister's trial is tomorrow. Who are you? Um, who are you? <laughs> exactly. It doesn't matter who I am. It only matters who you are. The famous defense attorney, Mia Fe- Oh. You are a little behind. Oh, uh, you're not Mia Fe, are you? I'm sorry, but Ms. Mia Fe no longer works here. It's, it's odd to me how she has so many, like, portraits that are really similar to Maya's. It's kind of, it's kind of throwing me off. So you are... the coffee boy? <laughs> I'm Phoenix Wright, a defense attorney. Right, right. That, that's a really cute portrait with, like, the glasses on. I like that. Wait, you're THE Phoenix Wright? The Phoenix Wright from the Edgeworth murder case. Th he wasn't the murderer, but yes. Um, yes, that's correct. It wasn't, it wasn't Edgeworth who was murdered, though. That's a relief, then. You're better than nobody. I'm sorry. I'm afraid I'm not taking cases right now. Then why... <laughs> then yeah, why'd you come to work? But you are Phoenix, right? Right? The undefeated defense attorney? Look, I'm not accepting any new cases. I'm sorry, but you'll have to try elsewhere. Please, I'm out of time. But, please, you have to help. It, it's my sister. Okay, I'm not the only one who noticed. Oh, God. Maya? Could it be? 
He's really thrown off without Maya around, huh? Okay. I'll hear you out. R really Thank you so much. Her, her happy portrait is really cute, too. My name's Emma. Emma Sky. I'm a scientific investigator. Okay. Scientific investigator? Okay. Um... More about you, please. Emma, was it? So you're a scientific investigator? Yes, that's right. Is something wrong? No, it's just you seem kind of... Or jumpy. Or maybe just young? Young? I'll be 16 years old this year. You're younger than Maya? Oh, I see. Wait, only 16? I'm set to be formally assigned to forensics in three more years. Wow. You are very responsible and forward-thinking. My work is becoming quite well-known, at my age, no less. Um, so what exactly is your current position, then? Well, legally speaking, I guess you'd call me an 11th grader. <laughs> But I'm ready to do my job, at my age, no less. Great, another future professional in training. I like her. She's fun. Okay, uh, the case? So what's this about a case? You said the trial's tomorrow? My sister didn't do it. She wouldn't stab someone with a knife. She wouldn't. So, it's a murder case. I don't care if there's a witness who saw her do it. She didn't do it. I know she didn't do it. It's a scientific fact. Okay. And... There's a witness. J just talk to her. You have to talk to her. Right. I suppose I will. I promised her I'd bring Mia Fey, but... That's interesting. How would she know Mia? Okay. Uh, yeah, what was her relation to Mia? My sister asked for Mia specifically. This Mia Fey person was a few years below her in school. So they went to the same school, huh? She always told me to go to Mia if I ever needed a, needed a defense attorney. And, well, I need one. Um, incidentally, Mia is a woman. Now that you mention it, I guess it is more of a woman's name than a man's. Well, it's nice of you to help your sister out like this. You must be close. Well, actually, when she gets like she is now, I kind of hate her. Okay. Huh? But she's my only family. Your only family? What about your parents? They died in a car accident when I was little. Oh, I'm sorry. That got real, real quick. So you want to be a scientific investigator when you grow up then? E excuse me? I'm not a child, I'll have you know. Still, it's good to have a goal, albeit a very unusual one. I believe investigations should be done scientifically. Don't you? Uh, yeah. Sure can't falter for a lack of enthusiasm. If this case is handled scientifically, I'm sure my sister's name will be cleared. Your sister? I've been doing research, you know. I'm developing a new scientific method of case investigation. I'll show you when I'm done. I'm looking forward to it. Guess I should get down to the detention center and talk to her sister. Okay. Um, hey, Emma. That's really weird to say. Hey, Emma, I'm an attorney. See this? It's my attorney's badge. Ah, well, I've never seen a real one before. You're the first one who's actually been interested in mine, believe me. <laughs> its composition is mostly silver. The gold plating is flaking a bit. She analyzed it, scientifically. There doesn't appear to be any corrosion due to sulfides. I'll give you $50 for it. <laughs> no. Sorry, but it's not for sale. Yet. <laughs> Yet, Phoenix. No. No, we still got, like, nine games ahead of us. Come on. Okay. Let's meet her sister. Hmm. I wonder what's wrong with Emma. She got quiet all of a sudden as soon as we arrived. Guard, I thought I told you I didn't want visitors. S -s -s sorry ma'am, it's j j just your sister. No excuses. Or did you not want to raise this year? Hmm. <laughs> Uh, uh, understood, ma'am. W w what was that all about? Whoa. H hi, Lana. Funny. I seem to remember specifically telling you not to come here. Perhaps my memory is failing. L look, I didn't want to come here either, okay? But your trial's tomorrow, and you still don't have a defense attorney. I'll be the one in court tomorrow. This has nothing to do with you, Emma. 
why are they so similar in appearance to Maya and Mia? They're not like exact, but th there's enough that I'm like, whoa. <laughs> Isn't that right, Mr. Wright? Hey, how do you know me? Mia mentioned you. I've heard quite a bit. Er, I'm sorry, what is it? What exactly is it that you do? My name is Lana, Lana Sky. I'm chief prosecutor for this district. Y you're a prosecutor? What the heck? Two sisters, one a lawyer. Could this be a coincidence? Emma, Lana. I mean, they're just alike. Is something wrong, Mr. Wright? Okay. Interesting. Uh, let's hear more about you. So you're the chief prosecutor? That is correct. I'm responsible for overseeing every handled... Every, every trial handled by prosecutors in this district. I make sure the prosecutors have what they need to do the job and manage every aspect. Those are my responsibilities, in a nutshell. That's an awfully large nutshell. <laughs> Still, I'm a little surprised. I would think you'd recognize the district's chief prosecutor, Mr. Wright. Huh? In fact, it seems impossible you wouldn't. You have a bandage on your hand. Um, Lana? What happened to your hand? Oh, this? I cut myself by accident. When I stabbed him, that is. Okay. Huh? I'm not very good at being a criminal, I suppose. How am I supposed to defend this? Time to change the subject. Wait, she was in the class ahead of Mia, wasn't she? Okay. Um, before that, let's find out a bit more about the case. There's something you should know from the start. Which is... The suspect in this case has confessed to the crime. Huh? W wait, but the suspect... The suspect is... Me. I did it. Well, Mr. Wright? Well, why don't you begin by telling me exactly what happened? The crime took place yesterday, uh, yesterday February 21st at 5.15pm. That's quite specific. It was in the witness's deposition. A witness clearly saw me committing the crime. Uh, my, that was a bit of bad luck, wasn't it? The crime took place in the underground parking lot at the prosecutor's office. That's not what it looked like in the intro, but okay. The body was found in the trunk of my subordinate's car. This is already complicated. The prosecutor's office, huh? In your subordinate's car trunk? Classy. I was arrested on the spot, caught red-handed, as it were. Well, that's just great. Okay. Uh, the victim. So who was the victim? An investigator with the police department. I suppose the correct term is detective. A detective? Is it THE detective? Death was due to a loss of blood. He was stabbed once in the stomach. By... you? Death wasn't immediate, but the wound was fatal. Interesting dodge of that question. I see. Allow me to repeat myself, Mr. Wright. The victim was a detective. I... I hope it's not... Gumshoe. You know what that means, don't you? Uh-oh. What, Mr. Wright? What does it mean? Well, it means... The police department will consider it a matter of pride to have me found guilty. They will use any means at their disposal to do so. Are you... Being like Edgeworth? Where you're like, it's pointless to fight this. Don't worry about it. I didn't do it. I know I didn't do it. But... Well, it... Edgeworth thought that he did it. At least not the first case. You know what I mean. Anyway, uh, are you trying to throw me off the case to not, you know, ruin anything for me? Because I, I, I get the vibe from you that you didn't do it. Obviously, you probably didn't because the game is having me defend you. But uh, I really don't see a killer in you, Lana. This case gets worse and worse with everything I learn. It is pretty bad. It does sound pretty rough. Relation to Mia. Um, you were in school with Mia, correct? A few years above her? Emma told you that too, did she? W well, why not? I did drag him all the way here from his office. Although it seems he has very little in common with Mia. Hey! It was in law school. I was in my third year and she was auditing the class. She was different than the other students. Different? She was strong. She'd do anything to become a defense attorney. Anything. 
That was probably why she was attached attracted to me. Uh, excuse me? Intellectually attracted. Lana was top of her class in school. <laughs> okay. I was the best there was. Oh. I'm doing pretty good in school too, by the way. It sounds a bit different when Emma says it. Well, Mr. Wright? Uh, excuse me? As you can plainly see, I am admitting my guilt. I think it's safe to say there's no way you can take this case. None. But, but Lana... Why? Why are you doing this to me? You never think of anyone but yourself. I know you didn't do it, Lana. I know. So... So how can you say you did? If I lose you, I'll be all alone. I... I hate you, Lana. Mr. Wright? Y yes I believe our discussion here has ended. The rest, I leave to you. Um, you mean you're requesting my services as your defense? Don't lose any sleep over it. Your client has confessed, after all. The case is over. Right, I'll do what I can to get to the bottom of this. You are very stone cold, but I get it. Lana has confessed to the crime, yes. But something doesn't fit. It's that look in Emma's eyes. There's something else going on here, and I'm going to find out what. I'm sorry, Mr. Wright. Huh? About what? My sister, she's not always like that, you know. I just never expected to be defending another prosecutor again. She's changed a lot. She used to be so gentle, always smiling. Everybody liked her. I see. Sorry, but I'm having trouble imagining that. What happened to her? I don't know for certain myself. I think maybe she... Well, maybe not. Sounds like there's something there that defies a simple scientific explanation. <laughs> Let's go check out this underground parking at the prosecutor's office, shall we? Uh, okay. All right. Okay, well, I'm already pretty emotionally invested in this case. I like the dynamic between Lana and us, uh, Emma. I almost called her Sky. That's her last name. Okay, let's go check out this underground parking lot then. Whoa. Very colorful and dynamic. So this is the lot where it all happened. Looks like they're still investigating. Funny that my first visit to the prosecutor's office should be like this. Hey, everyone, keep up the good work. But hey, what are you thinking? Well, they are going to be my co-workers three years from now, after all. Yeah, but... Okay, never mind. You're bouncy. You're peppy. It's fine. No harm in saying hello. Actually, there is. You know attorneys aren't supposed to examine crime scenes. I'm trying not to stand out too much here. See, have we been doing something illegal this whole time? Hey there. You expecting to go unnoticed? Oh, God, okay. You expecting to go unnoticed here, partner? But partner, is it... Is it Lotta? No, it is absolutely not Lotta. What do we have here? Looks like a Bambina got loose from the ranch and is up to no good. This music. <laughs> Folks gotta learn to keep them doggies tied down, partner. M Mr. Marshall? <laughs> oh my god, shaving his beard with a knife, are you kidding me? Marshall looks more like a sheriff to me. Looky here, Bambina. I know how you feel. But this is my gang's gold strike, see? You are all in on this, huh? Strike? This is our claim, our territory, with a mother load of evidence. If you're fixing to mess with what's ours, you'll regret it, partner. You know what dreams are, you know what dreams the cacti out in the desert dream you want to oh my god I, this guy talks so weird are you the are you the prosecutor in this case what's this guy talking about <laughs> drinking out of a flask too good lord you head along home now happy trails bambina i once again apologize for my terrible southern accent was that uh, a <laughs> hombre, <laughs> a friend of yours? 
Uh, kind of, sort of. Yeah, he's a detective. Oh, he's a detective? Who thinks he's a sheriff from the Wild West, it seems. What a character. Okay, um, well, let's get investigating. First of all, there's a wallet. What's this? A wallet? Um, excuse me, officer. W w wait, what are you doing, Mr. Wright? What am I doing? I just found this wallet, so I'm handing it over to the police. I don't believe it. This is real basic. Anything at a crime scene is evidence. Let's be scientific about this, please. Just put it in your pocket. <laughs> okay. H how is that scientific? Sounds like theft to me. Emma's a lot of fun. She she's a lot more airheaded than Maya, but I like that about her. She's she's not just like replacement Maya for the case. She has a lot of her own quirks and character, and I'm glad because I saw her and I was like immediately like, oh no. <laughs> But I'm glad to say that I fully see her as a separate character. A uh, wallet. A foldable wallet found at the crime scene. There seems to be nothing inside. Or something inside? Did it say something or nothing? Something. I read that terribly wrong. Uh, Edgeworth. And Gumshoe. Emma Sky, age 16. High school junior and self-styled scientific investigator. Client sister of Lana Sky. Lost guy, age 29, the defendant and chief prosecutor for the district, wounded on her right hand. Okay. I'm called to duty already, and at my tender age. Here, I'll teach you the trick to examining evidence in detail, okay? By the way, her eyes are sparkling, I can tell she's been waiting for this. Okay, okay, now. Look at the court record. Okay. You have to- okay, this is- Okay, you have to be sure to examine evidence carefully on all sides. Now let's start examining from every angle. Uh, rotate? Oh look, I think there might be a clue there. You should check it out with the press of the X button. Whoa, okay. We're going full 3D model now. Yep, this is something that can only be, uh, <laughs> only be done on a DS, baby. Okay, um, zoom in. Whoa, okay. This opens up all... A whole new realm of possibilities. I'm excited for this now. Okay, let's open it up and see what we have. Okay. This this is an ID card. Sergeant Bruce Goodman. ID 5842189. See? Well, isn't scientific investigation useful? I guess, though I don't see what science has to do with it. Okay. Goodman's ID, an investigator's ID card found at the prosecutor's office crime scene. And the ID, that's probably going to be important. Let's be sure to examine every piece of evidence we find. I guess I've got to be on my toes from now on. Okay, that's really cool that we have like 3D models. Can I see the attorney's bed? Whoa! <laughs> 26381. Okay. This is cool. Uh, so this is what the back of the badge looks like. And I always thought it had a safety pin. Each badge has a number carved into it. That way you can tell which attorney it belongs to. You mean you couldn't lend your badge to anyone? No, I'd be found out right away. Well, that's no fun. <laughs> okay. Um. Alright. This is super neat. It's also like rotating way out of my control. It's just kind of doing whatever it wants. I don't think I can turn it left or right. I don't think I can really... Yeah. There we go. It's kind of weird. I can tell that this was made for the touch screen. By the way, it controls with the right stick, but we can get used to it. Okay. Well, we got rid of the wallet. I guess that makes sense. Let's check out this ID. Anything interesting on the back? No, I can't even read it. Okay. A name and ID number are written here. Sergeant Bruce Goodman. Okay. I wonder why they only use numbers for IDs. What else would they use? Letters, silly. They're the reason we have a written language in the first place. True. Sergeant Bruce Goodman. ID yabba dab. <laughs> See, wouldn't that be better? Yabba dab? Well, it does have a certain ring to it. Exactly my point, teehee. It doesn't take much to amuse her. No, it doesn't. And that's charming. 
Okay. Uh, let's see what else we have going on here. I'm glad that some of the music is familiar, at least. This is where the cars leave the lot. The arrow on the ground makes it look more like the en they, they makes it look more like an entrance. What are you talking about? It's plainly an exit. Well, maybe it's both. Kind of a dual purpose? Aha! The theory of relativity! What? Uh, I've got to write this down. Ah, uh, hey, hey, Mr. Wright! Maybe you know... Was Mr... Maybe you know. Was Mr. Relativity German, or was he British? Oh my goodness. Mr. Relativity? Are you sure that was his name? Oh my god. Okay. Uh, we have some sort of sign. Look, a stylish glass-walled room. Very nice. You can see the whole parking lot from in there. It says security. Perhaps it's a cafe? Huh? Cafe security. Good. Okay. Come on, Emma. <laughs> let's let's come back down to earth a little bit. Yeah, that must be it. Let's check it out later. Um, I hate to break it to you, but I think that's probably just a security guard office. You know, I scored a 97 on my science test the other day. Too bad they don't have a test for common sense. <laughs> a bit harsh, Phoenix, but I get it. Okay. Look, a door. This must mean something. I'm not sure that doors mean anything. No, it won't open. A mysterious lock. I fail to see what's mysterious about it. Mr. Wright, you need to learn to enjoy life more. Let's finish our investigation first, shall we? <laughs> what a duo. Okay. Ladder. Aha, a ladder. Um, that's a step ladder. What's the difference? In scientific terms, please. S scientific huh? Look at the basic nature of things, Mr. Wright. This all seems so horribly familiar somehow, does it? Here, a phone. Let's see if it works. Hey, don't touch stuff we don't need to be touching. I can't hear anything. My ears. No, my ears. Maybe it's due to the barometric pressure. What is she babbling about? Hey, what did you just say? See, you can hear just fine. The phone's broken. Jeez. This wall is in our way. It's got a faucet for water. Wait, I know. This wall is merely a facade, hiding the truth. You're trying so hard, and I I'm glad you are, but we really need to back up. This is no wall, but a water tank. I fail to see how it makes any difference either way. True. There's so many things to examine, good lord. An oil drum. Looks like it's filled with water. It it's heavy, I can't even budge it. The drum over here is on its side. Wait, I know. I'll hide in here and do a stakeout. For what? I think you'll probably just get arrested. In fact, you may not even have to hide in the drum to get arrested. What? I'm not suspicious. Okay. Whoa, okay. And they were just hanging out of the back of the car? Damn, that's... That's rough. Okay. Um... What is this? Is it like a tape recorder? Well, no time to waste. Let's get hunting for clues. Hmm, I wonder what this is. Well, partner, looks like you got no intention of going home quietly. This guy cracks me up. The sheriff. Like I said before, this here's our claim. You'd best be moseying along unless you're fixing to bite the bullet. Gah, scary. Could you just tell us one thing? Who owns that car? You should know. Well, well, the little filly's got a good nose on her. You want to know who rides that red Mustang with the body in her saddle, eh? Please. No problem, partner. About time for vittles, anyway. Vitals? Vittles? Get yourself to the saloon up on the 12th floor of the prospector's office. Might just find you a cerveza you like. I don't know half these words. Prospector's office? Where does this guy think he is? And when, for that matter? Note to self, look up Vitals Saloon Cerveza. <laughs> Maybe we should check out room 1202, the High Prosecutor's Office. In any case, stay away from the car. You can look around here all you like, just keep your paws off our claim. Right, great. Great, maybe there's some clues around here, Mr. Wright. Let's check it out. Excuse me? Were you two all set? Oh, is this somebody else? Us? Hi. 
What's this? She couldn't be. Why do you have onigiri on your hat? <laughs> you, you're selling lunches? Here? This is a crime scene. Hello, half and half, was it? Who... Who are you now? Oh, uh, thanks. And you, sir? Y yes Some crunchy goodness coming at you. Um, thanks. Interesting way of doing business. This area is off limits to anyone without clearance. Are you also a like a detective or a prosecutor or something? Especially passersby. Or are you officers? All these all these characters introduced here are so eccentric. Uh, no, but you you don't exactly look like the type to have clearance. Well, that's hardly a way to greet someone. Even if my days as the cough-up queen are over. C cough up Huh? You know, I'm feeling kind of full. Maybe I'll pass on lunch. <laughs> I'm quite connected to this case, you see. The images are burned into my eyes, you might say. Yes, all the sordid secrets. So you're the witness? Secrets? Dear me, you are a slow one, aren't you? I'm referring to the murder, the stabbing of that detective. What? A witness clearly saw me committing the crime. Yeah, you're the witness. Okay. You mean you're the witness my sister was talking about? Please, cough up, queen. Tell us what happened. The name's Angel Star. Okay. Don't you go forgetting it. Or before you know it, I'll have you whimpering at my heels. Y yes, ma'am. Yipe, she means it. Okay. All right. Uh. All right, what do you know about the case? Somehow, I knew. Yesterday was a day of destiny. I knew something was going to happen. Just like I know that the daily special on Friday every week is salmon. Destiny? Was yesterday special for some reason? You're a defense attorney, right? You should know that. You should know the foul misdeeds of the evil ones who haunt this den of inequity. It, evil ones? Prosecutors, they have no qualms about blacketing the names of innocents. And yesterday, they paid homage to the most evil one of all. They gave an award for King of Prosecutors. <laughs> what a farce. So she's saying... There was some sort of prosecutor convention yesterday? I was almost compelled to lace their lunches with something foul. You are... So suspicious that I believe you're innocent. Do you have a personal grievance against prosecutors or something? Or is there some kind of scientific evidence of this, um, evil? Young miss, mock me at your own risk. You'll soon find out why they call me the cough-up queen. Ew. I don't, I don't like you at all. The most heinous of all the evil ones, the one they awarded yesterday. It was in his car that they found the body. Proof that he devours the evilest lunches of all. R really Really what? I'm totally confused. I'm also extremely confused. One thing's clear. This lunch lady has a thing against prosecutors. Okay. I, I, I really don't like this character. <laughs> so what exactly was it that you witnessed, Miss Star? It was a fascinating spectacle, to be sure. I now feel I know what they say when they talk about a woman's wrath. To see Lana Sky wield that knife so... Her knife flashed in anger, bringing him to a sad end. It was truly a sight to see. Y you mean you saw the very moment of the crime? The sound of his silvery ties to this world being cruelly cut still rings in my ears. And the rhythmic beat of Lana Sky's knife. Wait a second. You know Lana Sky? Hm, of course. It's quite a feat, becoming chief prosecutor. Okay. I... I don't trust you at all. I don't think you're the murderer, but I think you're definitely hiding something or lying about something because you don't like Lana. How many lunch boxes of sin did she pack to make that journey, I wonder? She always travels light. <laughs> now, why would this pretty lunch lady know the chief prosecutor's name? Let's learn more about you. Um, could we ask you a bit about yourself, Ms. Star? 
I come here every day to sell lunches. I import only the freshest and best from the Far East. For some reason, the box lunches are a hit here. We're still sticking with <laughs> this taking place in LA, and she just imports bento <laughs> from Japan, I guess. Why not make the lunches here rather than import them? Did you say something? N no Only true connoisseurs can understand. That looks disgusting. The kind you can only tell someone who is... The kind you can only tell someone who has tried great... Oh my god, I can't read this sentence. General So's Trilobite lunch set. Ah, uh, never mind. You win. I don't even want to appreciate part of a Trilobite's flavor. <laughs> anyway, I come here every day to sell lunches. My boyfriend works in the security room here at the prosecutor's office. Y your boyfriend? See the security room over there? The glass-walled booth? I sell my lunches, and since I'm here anyway, I drop in to see him. I Okay, so real quick, I've noticed there's a lot more dialogue in this case. Just, like, constant dialogue. And there's a lot more to examine, and this case already seems significantly more complex in, like, the area that it took place in. So I'm really trying to, like, catch up. I can really feel that this case was made much later. Um, so I'm a little nervous about this case right now, but we're going to push through. Since you're here anyway, I guess selling lunches is more important than romance. So to scientifically analyze the data available so far, you, Miss Star, are a lunch vendor with an ulterior motive for coming here. <laughs> Useful analysis, not. Okay. Uh, prosecutor's office. Did you have a bad experience with a prosecutor, Miss Star? I sense some hostility. Hostility? <laughs> Perhaps. Prosecutors are all alike, and the bigger they get, the worse they smell. Kind of like a ten-day-old clams in the chowder. I wonder if Miss Star was involved in some sort of legal trouble in the past. Probably. That'd be a sure cause of food poisoning, scientifically speaking, of course. I mean, now you're talking cough-up queen. I thought she was just a lunch vendor, but now I'm not so sure. Okay, Miss Star. Well, do you know who Bruce Goodman is? About this card. Lunchland vendors only accept cash, no cards. Especially not a card belonging to someone else. No, no, this isn't a credit card. It's an ID card. It belongs to a detective. And you're showing this to me, the lunch lady, why? That's like showing a fine honeyed ham to a detective. Why do I always feel like I'm being mocked? Okay, well, you know, I was just curious, okay? Okay, we aren't even allowed to go to the right anymore. We can't even look around the car. Okay. Well, then I suppose we have nowhere else to go but the high prosecutor's office. Whoa. Whoa. Wait a minute. That coat is looking mighty familiar. Also a steel samurai statue. This is the kind of room that just screams, I can do the job. Quite a change from your office, really. Good lord. Thanks. Look, look, there's a trophy or something here. K. A trophy? That shield? What, that shield? It takes real nerve to display stuff like this. Whoever's office this is, they must be a real stuck-up jerk. I, I know exactly whose office this is. I'm gonna guess with the voice. Phoenix Wright. You never tire of prying into other people's business, do you? That voice, it's definitely. Hey, buddy. Long time no see, Edgeworth. It's been two months. Huh? Ah! M -m -m Mr. Edgeworth! You know him from somewhere? Uh, of course, I'm his biggest fan, are you? My sister introduced us once and... Right, her sister is the chief prosecutor after all. Well, what brings you here? I'll warn you, I've been known to be a real stuck-up jerk. <laughs> no, no, did I? No, it was just Mr. Right here, he... Hey, don't blame me. We're, we're just here to investigate a murder case. Murder? A body was found in this nasty, bright red sports car in the parking lot. I'm curious about that plant in the back. It, it looks like a gift plant, but from who? 
Mm hmm. That would be my car. Oh no. Also, this portrait is funny, but what? <laughs> oh god. What of it? What? Y y your car? I'll say one thing. She certainly can scream. Okay. Well, this got significantly more complex. Edgeworth, you gotta stay out of trouble, man. So the body was found in your car? Go ahead. Say it right. You think I did it, don't you? No. After you went through all that trouble to help me last year, no less. N no we don't think you did it. I mean, it was my sister who stabbed him. Uh, wait, no, she didn't do that. I mean... Wait. So you're the chief prosecutor's little sister, then? Y yes sir and the sky. It, uh... It's nice to meet you again. Now that didn't sound forced at all. Oh, now I remember. You've... really grown. I'll admit it was a surprise for me, too. To think that my own car would become the scene of a murder. More surprising still. I'm being forced to prove my superior's guilt. Oh, no. Uh... Okay, well... I can understand. W wait what did you say? Lana Sky is the chief prosecutor, the top prosecutor in the district. She can't prosecute herself, so I'll be the prosecutor at the trial tomorrow. You? Mr. Edgeworth? Great. Well, are you ready for round three, pal? To be honest, it's a bit of a miracle I'm still here at all. What do you mean? Rumors. You've heard the rumors about me, haven't you? Miles Edgeworth. It's hard to remember a time when there weren't rumors about this guy. Forging evidence, arranging false testimony, illegal searches, you name it. Thanks to you, uh, thanks to you, my innocence was established in the trial at the end of last year. However, there are some who say I'm the one responsible for the current incident. W what That's crazy! Hmm. Some people need very little excuse to think ill of others. It's a fact of life. Impossible to stop. But... Some of them even go so far as to present me with toys like this. They think it's funny. Toys? That bronze shield? There's gotta be a story behind that one. Okay. Uh... So, how do you know Lana, other than the fact that she's the Chief Prosecutor? Chief Prosecutor Sky? Yes, we worked together on a case. We first worked together on a case two years ago. It was my first big case. That's right, I remember. Two years ago, I wasn't even a lawyer yet. Since then, I always felt that she was looking out for me. It appears I was mistaken. M mistaken Why? I mean, I know she's not the warmest person, but I'm sure she felt some responsibility for you. Then... Why? Why did she stab someone in the trunk of my car? Not only that, she stabbed him with my knife. Oh my god! <laughs> Why does this keep happening? What? What? Mr. Edgeworth, your knife was the murder weapon. To be specific, it was the knife I keep in the toolbox in the trunk of my car. Okay. Uh, the murder weapon, usually in Edgeworth's toolbox, traces a victim's blood, no prints. Um, Edgeworth? What? Are you sure you didn't do it? <laughs> that look. Come on, can't you take a joke? You have a strange sense of humor, Mr. Wright. Okay. Well, do you know who Bruce Goodman is? Say, Edgeworth, I was wondering about this. M Mr. Wright! Huh? What? Are you sure you should be showing that to Mr. Edgeworth? Oh, he'll take it for sure, won't he? <sighs> I wish I could be on the same side as Mr. Edgeworth. But then my sister would be found guilty. If she sighs any deeper, I'm going to start getting depressed. <laughs> okay, uh, let's take a look at this knife. Okay. Nothing really weird about it. Uh, is there anything to examine? This must be the victim's blood, right? 
Either that or Edgeworth cut himself peeling an apple. <laughs> what's, Edgeworth, what's Edgeworth doing with a knife like this anyway? Hey, maybe he spends his weekends roughing it in the wild. Probably not. No way. Edgeworth in the wild? I think my fruit peeling theory is more likely. Are you kidding? I always pictured him as an outdoorsman. There's no shot. I, I don't think he I don't think he knows how to pitch a tent. Now that's a scary thought. Okay. Anything else of note? No. This 3D model thing is so cool. Okay. Um All right. Let's take a look around the room. Hey, a chessboard. I'm not too up on my chest, but it looks like blue is in a bit of a tight spot. Yeah, a little bit. The red knights have surrounded the blue pawn, but where's the... Where's the blue king, huh? Those horses are mounted knights. Their swords have really sharp edges. And check out that poor pawn. His head is kind of spiky. Kind of reminds me of you. Oh my... <laughs> Mr. Edgeworth must be an avid chess player. What's wrong, Mr. Wright? Edges surrounding a pawn with spiky hair. Nah, it's nothing. <laughs> what the hell? Whoa, these are all case files? They're stacked up to the ceiling. There's even a ladder. Odd. I thought Edgeworth wasn't good with heights. <laughs> he must have someone get them for him. That's hilarious. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah, probably. Strange. Why did I just picture Detective Gumshoe? He must study these case reports so closely. He's so cool. You wouldn't say that if you saw him sweating bullets up on that ladder. <laughs> Man. Imagine if there was an earthquake while he was on a ladder. Fuck. That would... Yikes. Mr. Edgeworth has such a comfy sofa. Sofas like this make me want to curl up and take a nap. I bet he pours over, I bet he pours over this, his case files here until, until the wee hours of the morning. I can't read. I'm so out of practice with reading out loud now. Then he takes off his jacket, rolls up his sleeves, and goes to sleep using his arms as a pillow. Why are you so into this? I don't believe it. She's actually daydreaming about Edgeworth working. I bet in the morning he has sofa hair and little creases in his cheek from the seams. You need to back up. Why are we writing fan fiction? He's so cool. Sofa hair is cool? <laughs> okay. I've been wondering, what the heck is this? It has a big K on it. Mm -hmm. Of prosecutors. Oh, king of prosecutors. Okay. Huh? What's that? It's the King of Prosecutors trophy. K -k 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 king of Prosecutors? It's a great honor. They send that shield to the, breast to the best prosecutor each year. What? So? So that K, that's... K stands for King? Yeah, you got a problem with that? I didn't design the thing. King of Prosecutors? Kind of sounds kind of like employee of the month, only better. Okay, why is it in our inventory? King of Prosecutors trophy given to Edgeworth, King of Prosecutors at the PD on the day of the murder. Okay. Interesting. How's that going to tie into this? Let's check it out. Okay. I think I figured out how it's going to tie into this. Oh, that's, that's, that's a cool trophy, actually. I kind of like that. I don't know why the shield's broken. Oh, because you shatter the defense. Okay. Cool. This is a pretty sick trophy, actually. Okay, what's going on here? Is Bruce Goodman on this nameplate? Hey, check it out. There's a metal plate here. Hmm, it looks like the names of all the previ previous recipri recipients are engraved on it. Wow, one guy's listed a bunch of times. Von Karma. Yeah. I guess he must be a foreigner. Uh, yeah, that's probably it. Well, wherever he's from, he must have been an amazing prosecutor. I guess? I'd like to meet this Mr. Von Karma sometime. No, I don't want to do that voice ever again. Please. When she says it, his name does have kind of a ring to it. <laughs> okay. Well. Whoa, we can just go like... <laughs> okay. It's so hard to get it, like, reoriented back to, like, straight. Okay. So that's the King of Prosecutors shield, huh? 
Well done, Edgeworth. You must be proud to be the king of prosecutors. Congratulations, king of prosecutors. Read the room, guys. Please stop saying that. That still doesn't explain one thing. Why is the tip of his shield bro the shield broken off? Wait a minute. Is that not an intentional design? That's an interesting shape. Hold on. It's a shape that you could stab somebody with, perhaps. I don't know. Maybe. And that's probably. Oh, wait a minute. Did they give it to- Okay, hold on. Did a piece break off of it, the murder happened with that piece, and then they framed Edgeworth? Is that what's going down? Wow, this jacket is even lacier than his usual ones. Yeah, that, that's a pretty intense jacket, actually. This must be his lucky trial jacket. Lucky jacket. Right. I've never seen him wear it. I'm sure there's a story behind why it's in a frame. There must be, right? Maybe I'll be naughty and take a picture. She's getting way too excited about this. Okay. Emma's interesting. My, my, my. What an amazing bouquet. Just right for, just right for Mr. Edgeworth. No kidding. Hey, there's a card on it. Back from the dead. Wendy. Okay. Wendy? I've heard that name somewhere before. And beside it, a giant steel samurai. Oh, no. No. <laughs> Not that, Wendy. <laughs> wow, I want one. Huh? There's something written on the bottom of, the, of his foot. Between a rock and a hard place. Wendy. What is this about, old bag? What are you doing? Wendy, is she Mr. Edward's fiance? God, I hope not. <laughs> um, I don't think so. Ugh. Okay, we're just gonna we're just gonna move on. Whoa! What a view! It must be nice to have an office on the twelfth floor. I guess you would feel important. Incidentally, were you to jump out this window, the time until impact with the ground would be Got it. Approximately 3.23 seconds. Okay. That's handy to know. Alright. Uh, tea set. Ooh, cute. What a pretty tea set. I go for more of the instant tea bags myself. Amazing. The drawer below is filled with packets of tea leaves. What kind of tea? Edgeworth strikes me as, a, as an Earl Grey kind of guy. They're all sorted by place of origin and flavor. Look at this royal blend. What an exquisitely splendid concoction. There's such a thing as taking a hobby too far. Nah. It's fitting for Edgeworth. Okay. Again, there's so much to examine here. A work desk. It's quite tidy, as one might expect. What a nice desk. Easy to use and easy on the eyes. It's polished so well I can see my own reflection. <laughs> it took me a second to realize what that implied. Strange. Why did I just picture Detective? Why did I just picture Detective Gumshoe? Maybe I'll take that name plaque as a souvenir. No, don't. He'll sue you. <laughs> All right, and the chair. Okay. So that's it here, huh? This was all to reintroduce Edgeworth into the plot. I'm glad that we're not just with new characters. We have old characters too. Okay. Hey, I'm an attorney. I once dreamed of being a defense attorney a long time ago. We know. What? You wanted to be a defense attorney, Mr. Edgeworth? Yet, my path is laid out clearly before me. I have no time to reflect on what might have been. Okay. Well... I guess... That's probably everything here, right? I can't think of anything else. Let's... Let's go see... Oh, she's not here. I was gonna present the King of Prosecutors thing to her. Okay. Nothing new here. What are those badges on your shirt, by the way? I like the ribbon. The ribbon's cute, but those badges are really weird. One of them is pogging. Uh... I don't really think you're going to be useful. Wait a minute. Who did she say her boyfriend was? 
She said her boyfriend was... Was it a security guard or was it a prosecutor? Isn't it? No. Edgeworth, no. No. Angel Star, age 31. Mysterious lunch lady witness to the murder known as the cough-up queen. Okay. Well. Uh... What do you know about this? Y yes You said you wanted some hot tea, right? Um, no, but thanks. She didn't even look at me. Okay. You must have to brew the leaves for a long time to get a rich flavor like this. We pre-infuse the leaves with steam before brewing. How the fuck does that work? I knew it, so that's the secret to their aroma. Exquisite. The only thing I'm smelling here is wasted time. Yes. Uh, don't know anything about this either. Okay. Hmm. So then there must be something left with Edgeworth, then. So can you tell me more about this? It's against my policy to discuss evidence with the defense. Yeah, I mean, I guess that's true. Especially with you. He doesn't like you much, does he, Mr. Wright? Oh no, he likes me a lot. <laughs> nah, with Edgeworth, it's never personal. It's all about winning tomorrow. Okay. Um... So basically, this says you were the best of the best last year, huh? You can take that foolish grin elsewhere, right? I lost a day of work to receive that travesty. Huh? Why is that? I had to go to the police department to receive that broken shield. The police department? Yes, right next to the police station downtown. You've been there, haven't you? Where Detective Gumshoe works? Yeah. Um, I was wondering something about your shield. Why is it broken? What does it matter? I've got more important things to worry about. Oh, right. I feel like that's going to be pretty important. He doesn't seem too concerned about his award, for better or worse. Yesterday was a very busy day for the prosecutor's office. Maybe we should ask him more about yesterday? Yeah, probably a good idea. The day of the crime. What was going on? Could you tell me more about yesterday, the day of the murder? Yesterday was the annual cleaning day at the prosecutor's office. Cleaning day? Working with the police department, we sort and file all evidence for solved cases. We call it evidence transferal. Wiping your hands of old cases, in other words. Oh, and another thing. A ceremony was held at the police department. There's an annual review and awards for outstanding police officers and prosecutors. And that's when you got the shield? I was at the police department yesterday afternoon. I got back here at 5.12. Okay, when was the murder? Do we know? We don't, e we don't even know the victim. That's very precise. People like myself and Mr. Edgeworth pride ourselves on our precision, Mr. Wright. <laughs> okay. Sounds good, Emma. No, I place little faith in my memory. The only thing I trust is solid evidence. Oh, <laughs> he's got the parking stuff. Okay, so are, are we really going to have to prove that Edgeworth is innocent? I mean, I guess it makes sense because it's his knife and his car. Was there no camera in the... A lot of these could be solved with cameras. This is the parking stop. This is the parking stop from the underground lot. The murder took place around 5.15. Um. That sucks. Okay. So the murder happened right after you got back. What right? I'd appreciate it if you direct that suspicious glare elsewhere. Um. Who are you now? Excuse me, but is Mr. Edgeworth, uh, anywhere on the premises? I'm Edgeworth. What is it? I'm here, sir, at the request of the chief, sir. I've got your report, sir. Report? What? Did you find new evidence in the case against Chief Prosecutor Sky? I don't like the way this conversation is going at all. Er, Sky, sir? No, sir. The name of that kind, sir, is... The name of that kind, sir, not in this report, sir. What? I think I just heard Edgeworth's lid blow. <laughs> Mr. Edgeworth's lid isn't on very tight, is it? I made a clear request to the police department, did I not? I need to focus on the trial tomorrow, so don't bring me anything unrelated. Sir, but sir... I'm just following orders, sir. They told me to bring this to you. Why is your hand injured? What's going on? 
I wasn't aware- Oh, whoops. Give me your name. Uh, yes, sir. M M Meekins, sir. Officer Meekins. Right. Officer Meekins, take your report and leave. And good luck with that raise next month. Oof. Uh, but, but, sir, I, I didn't know. Poor guy. Looks like he was absent on the day they gave out brains and good luck. Why is his hand injured? It's the other hand. It's the opposite hand of Lana's. So I don't know if that's of importance, but it's an interesting coincidence. Right. Y yes, sir. God, he caught me off guard. As you can see, I'm busy. You may leave now. L let's do what he says, Mr. Wright. The victim was a detective from the same department as the patrolman just now. Go down to the police department. You can ask more there. Uh, uh, thanks. He seems to have finally calmed down, at least. Okay. Well, this case is already fascinating. I wasn't sure how I was, how I was feeling about it at first, but now that we're a bit more into it, I'm starting to kind of get into the groove of it. So, yeah, I'm excited. Anyway... Thank you all for watching this episode of Let's Play Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney Blind. I've been Guildmaster Wiggly. If you enjoyed the video, please consider giving it a like. If you are new, consider subscribing. If you want to follow my Twitch, Twitter, or join my Discord, they're in the description. And I hope to see you all in the next one.